Help me welcome Dr. Brad Strawn up here. Okay, here's the deal, Brad. My question is, can I be fixed? Because my wife needs to know soon. Can I be fixed? That's a little more personal than I was ready to answer this morning. <laughs> can a person change? I sure hope so. Yeah. Oh, amen. Thanks for coming, Brad. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but it's but it's difficult, isn't it? I mean, do you think that a person really can change? Can a can a person go from being a habitual uh, sinner mm -hmm. to a person who's not? By the grace of God, in a long, laborious, often painful process, yes. Okay. Amen. Sometimes it happens like that. We might have some testimonies. For most of us, not, not for me. Yeah, not for me either. Not for the multitude of people I've got to sit with in my office and, and, and now pastor at the universities I've worked at. It's, it's, it's much more difficult than that because I think it, it uh, first of all, I'm not sure we like change all that much, right? We get fairly comfortable with who we are. And so change involves a number of things, but one of the things it involves is, is really kind of a radical reorientation and rethinking about myself and myself in relationship to other people. And if I'm a Christian, I think it also implies that there may be also a change in how I think about God and how I understand God. Okay, well that was, that's a big line. So are you suggesting that, okay, let's assume first of all that we're, that we're Christian and desirous of being Christian, okay? Okay. So are you saying that I probably can't change unless something about my view of God changes? I think that our, uh, uh, you know, and, and there's theologians who have said this, this isn't just me talking hopefully here, but, but that the way, we, the way we are in the world is always a combination of how I understand myself in relationship to other people. I think one of the things that has come through in your sermon series is that we are not individuals. We are uh, communal creatures, that we only come into being in relationships, we only exist in relationships, we'll, we only continue in relationships. Um, and so uh, uh, how we understand ourselves and how we live our life is always in relationship to another. And that other for Christians is also going to be God. Hmm. And so we have a tendency, and most of us can probably testify to this, that we have a tendency sometimes to make God or Jesus in our own image, right? And so whether it's our image of God, if, if our image of God changes through some experience we have, I think our image of self changes. And if our image of self changes through some experience, then subsequently our image of God will probably also change. Okay. And oftentimes in some very dramatic ways, Paul is a great example of that. Yeah. But, okay, but absent um, this sort of Paul sort of experience where God comes in, grabs him by the nap of the neck, throws him on the <laughs> ground, uh, absent that kind of thing, how can we at church change? And we're, we're at church, so how can we as individuals change and grow and move? Okay, so this is, a, this is a sort of a wordy phrase I've sort of picked up and pieced together, but I'm growing really, really fond of it. And if you're from <laughs> SNU, get ready because you're going to hear it a lot probably. <laughs> to change as a believer means to participate in a community of faith that practic practices rituals of transformation whose end point is to transform us into the very image and likeness of Jesus. For example. Right. For ex yes. What, 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 oh, for what example. <laughs> he always wants specificity. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of a theory guy, John. I like to stay up here. <laughs> just get it to the ground. <laughs> well, there's, there's just a ton of them. I mean, the spiritual disciplines throughout, throughout um, the history of Christianity are an example. So we need to read scripture together, by the way, hmm. um, so that it becomes transformative. We need to engage in prayer together. We need to engage in fasting together. We need to engage in acts of mercy together. Hmm. Um, but, but, but in those rituals, I think those rituals do two things, and maybe this will get more at your question, is I think the rituals do two things. Um, one is that they hold up a mirror to us, yeah. right? A mirror of insight. And insight is important when it comes to change, right? A lot of times we may have the experience that you change once you recognize something about you that perhaps you didn't want to recognize. And often, if you're married, it's often your spouse who holds up that mirror. <laughs> sometimes it's a friend or a family member. Sometimes it's a counselor. Sometimes it's a pastor. Sometimes it's a mentor, discipler, 
Um, and so these rituals, whatever they are that we're engaging in, they hold up a mirror and they say, you know, what you say to us week after week, here's Jesus, here's you, confess the difference. Yeah. And so sometimes these rituals hold up a mirror. The other thing the rituals allow us to do, very important as a community, is they give us exemplars to imitate. Yeah. We, need, we need other believers that we can imitate, that we can be like, that we can say, I want to be like that person. Because I know now here's where I am, I've just seen the difference, and, and this is what I'd like to be like. And so I need these exemplars that I can begin to... To, to imitate and participate with and, and become transformed. 